we begin our journey in the cold outer solar system far from the sun. Slowly, we pass behind one of Saturn's icy moons. Rising above the moon, we see the majestic planet with its spectacular rings. Although all giant planets have rings, only Saturn's are so wide and bright that we can see them through a small telescope on Earth. These rings are almost 500,000 kilometers wide, but only a few tens of meters thick. Their total mass is that of a medium-sized moon. The rings are tiny, icy particles, each with its own orbit around Saturn. Saturn is a gas giant, so large for its mass that it would float in water. Leaving the frozen Saturn, we look sunward toward the inner solar system. The Earth below us waits for sunrise. This is the only world where water, ice, and water vapor coexist, with places as dry and barren as the Sahara Desert drifting below us now. This desert is brought to life by the water of the Nile River. As we pass the Arabian Peninsula, we turn backward to see the Strait of Hormuz, separating the Persian Gulf from the Arabian Sea. The Indian subcontinent lies below us, with the snow-capped Himalayas to our right. The tropical water-rich archipelagos of Malaysia and Indonesia lie ahead and to the left. We pass over Borneo and can see northern Australia as night falls on the Earth below. Earth does not travel through space alone, but has a companion moon, a world without Earth's precious water. The gibbous moon lies before us. Soon we can see the crater Copernicus separating the sea of rains below and the ocean of storms to the right. Romantic and wishful names for a world without air or water. The search for water takes us to the red planet Mars. As sunlight reaches its rusty red surface, we see the enormous canyon system of the Valles Marineris below. This is a rift valley that dropped long ago between the shifting plates of Mars. If placed on Earth, it would stretch across the United States from New York to San Francisco. We wonder if any of these channels were formed by running water in the distant past. Moving westward, we cross a maze of channels called the Noctis Labyrinthus and wonder how these were formed in a world whose atmosphere is too thin for water to flow on its surface. Soon we are climbing the Pharsus Plateau with its four giant volcanoes. Slowly, we pass over Pavanus Mons, rising seven kilometers above the surrounding plain. Beyond it, along the horizon, lies the enormous Olympus Mons, the largest volcano in the solar system. As we move away, we see the two other giant volcanoes as well, Arcea Mons on our left and Ascraeus Mons on our right. Did the eruptions of these volcanoes once bring water to this dry planet? 
Is this a world that has had rivers of water like Earth, or a dry planet more like our barren moon? We will send more probes, search for more signs of water, and still more.